Germany and the language of German is well known for its many dialects from Schwabian to Plattdeutsch to Bavarian. But what about Austria? Known for being Germany, but again, Austria is Germany's little neighbor to the south that also speaks German. It's smaller in size and population, but nevertheless still has its own German dialects and regional forms. However, they can be broadly split into two main groups, Austro-Bavarian and Alemannic. Although some cities like Innsbruck or Salzburg may try to claim they have a distinct dialect from the standard Austro-Bavarian one, the only major city dialect that is widely recognized is Viennese German spoken in and around the nation's capital, Vienna, and Vorarlbergerisch spoken in Vorarlberg in the mountains. I'll go over these dialects and the two major ones as I break down the Austrian dialects of German through their morphology, phonology, and regional diction or vocabulary or slang. Or in German, the Umgangssprache. First, it's useful to start with a map. Here's a map of the dialect regions of Austria. You can see herein the goldish yellow sort of color is the Austro Bavarian dialect and all of its subforms. Right here is specifically Viennese, and to the west, up in the mountains near Switzerland, is the Alemannic dialects. And these other little bubbles of blue and green and purple are other languages spoken by minorities near the border Italian, Hungarian, Slovenian, etc. We'll start by examining Austro-Bavarian, which is the common dialect for the lower elevation and less mountainous region of Austria. The name comes from the Union of Austria and Bavaria, since most of Bavaria and Germany and lowland Austria speak a very similar dialect, so they get grouped into the same family. This means most Austrians and Bavarians will likely have no issue understanding each other's dialects, meanwhile North Germans might struggle somewhat to fully understand an Austrian's dialect. Nevertheless, the Eastern Austro-Bavarian dialects are distinct in some manner, depending on where you are in Austria. The further north you are in the lower land will be different from how Austrian German is spoken in the higher elevation in Southern Austria. Starting with phonology, this main Austrian dialect and really all Austrian dialects were indeed affected by the high German consonant shift since they are all high German dialects. The closer and deeper one gets into the Alps, the stronger the shift can be seen. This means that just like standard German, P became P, T became T, and K became H. For example, in Lower German, this would be called an Apple, but in Upper German, it's called Apfel. This is also the case in Standard German. Although these changes can all be seen in Standard German, these dialects were also affected by a further shift as voiced plosives D and G became voiceless p, t, k, respectively. This can be seen in a word like zeit, where it was originally something akin to tide, but the t turned into a t at first, and then later the d became t, making zeit. This shift is seen in all of these dialects, but to different extents. In Austrian specifically, the phonology of vowels is also different. Many describe Austrian to sound more sing-songy than standard German. Specifically, high vowels like I and Y are distinguished by more fronted constriction, turning words in standard German like Fisch into Fisch. Word stress is also usually realized on the lexical root, thus the first syllable but this can often be used to distinguish between the meanings of words, where übersetzen is to ferry someone across a river, but übersetzen is to translate. There are a lot of other phonological differences that I'll get into more of the other dialects, but I won't have time to cover them all, unfortunately. In the meantime, when it comes to morphology, there are a lot of differences as well, but here are just a handful. Austrian dialects tend to do things like umlaut certain vowels frequently, especially when a vowel is followed by er, l, t, or k, t. An example is the word nutzen in standard German, which in Austrian becomes nützen, as the u is followed by a t. Some words in Austrian German will also receive an er suffix when being referred to as a noun. For example, the one in standard German, or der eins, will become der einzer. 
Another difference is that Austrian will use the same prefix for the same verb in German, but a different verb itself, while still meaning the same thing. An example can be seen with ausständig and ausstehend. Austrian speakers will also sometimes replace am with auf as a preposition. So instead of am Strand in German, an Austrian might say auf Strand. Standard Austrian also has plenty of fun slang words and phrases that differ from regular German. Krass is used as a word to say when you're feeling very emotional. Happy or sad, it doesn't matter. A common Austrian greeting is Grüß Gott. You could say Aufgewärmt ist nur ein Gulaschgut after a bad breakup. Standard Austrian has been cleaned up somewhat, but still exhibits the hallmarks of an upper German dialect, and despite the spelling and morphological differences between it and Standard German, its spelling is generally more readable than that of Bavarian spelling conventions. Next, we look at Viennese, spoken in and around Vienna. It's a regional dialect of the main Austro-Bavarian dialect, and does have some distinct differences. Phonologically in Viennese, or Viennalisch in German, diphthong vowels are often monophthongized, meaning the vowel is stretched out. You can see this with heis in High German becomes chas from the Bavarian chas. Another example is German haus becoming chas. The lengthening of not just diphthongs in German, but also vowels is quite common in Viennese. A vowel might also be inserted into a word to intensify it. Like a regular faschwind could become an intense faschavind. Morphologically, there are few, if no, differences between Viennese and Austro-Bavarian dialects. Umlauts will still be applied to certain vowels and prefixes and suffixes used alike, although the word da is often replaced with dort, even when it's not needed or doesn't matter. Viennese is full of fun phrases and words found in no other dialect. Zene is given a stop to become zend, and a baz is a slimy mass. A kspusi could be your girlfriend. You could tell someone to meet at 10 o'clock by saying, um zene. You could ask for the price of something by saying, wie viel kostet es? And to translate is, übersetzen. Finally, we look at Alemannic, or Alemannisch, which is mostly a Swiss dialect, but has Austrian versions steep in the Western Austrian Alps, especially around Vorarlberg, where they insist a form of Alemannic exists in the form of Vorarlbergerisch. Alemannic German has consistently been the hardest to understand, even for native speakers. It has had the highest amount of isolation and features the greatest level of variation between even local communities. In phonology, on top of all previously mentioned consonant and vowel shifts, many stops, especially st in hast or gipst, are turned into sh, and lower vowels will occasionally be constricted up. This can be seen in Vorarlbergerisch as was ist ein Problem becomes was ist die Problem, as well as was hast du becomes was hosch. And was gibst du becomes was gich. This is also occurring as certain sh sounds get dropped, where in standard German nicht becomes nit. Other stops will also get dropped, like in the word bonden becomes bandra. In morphology, suffixes like li and le become common depending on location, and you can see this as. In this poem here, Fesseschen is changed into Fessele. And many words become fused together or shortened, seen again in Vorarlbergerisch as Was machst du becomes Was machst. As you can hopefully see, Austrian German comes in a spectrum of High German dialects, from the standard Bavarian-esque lower elevation dialects, to the bustling Viennese interpretation, all the way to the Alemannic Austrian spoken in the mountains. While it doesn't have quite the diversity of German dialects in Germany, Austria is certainly a great case study of the subtle differences between the upper German lingosphere as you move between the high mountains and the lower foothills.